In this session, we're going to look at critical decision making. We're going to give you a handrail, a toolkit if you like, for making effective decisions when you're under pressure. As we've said before, when we're under pressure, physiologically and psychologically, the irony is we're in the worst possible shape to be making decisions, and arguably when the consequences are greatest. So a simple effective toolkit really will help us make those really important decisions. Before we go any further, I want you to have a quick look at this video. Okay, what you've seen there is obviously a pretty bad day at the office. It's a gunfight somewhere in Afghanistan. And unless you have military experience, if I was to ask you what was going on there, chaos, confusion, fear, um, etc., are all words that would probably get used um, to describe that particular set of circumstances. The thing is, even in those circumstances there, what we've got to try and do is get a grip of what's going on. And the first thing we've got to do is calm ourselves down. We used to use the expression, take a knee. Draw a deep breath. Am I okay? There's a reason when you're an aeroplane and the oxygen masks drop down, they tell you to put your own oxygen mask on first. And that's because unless you're in a circumstance to be able to help yourself, you stand no chance to help somebody else. So the first tip we're going to give you is take what we call a tactical pause or draw breath. So in that situation there, I was going to find something safe to stand behind, take a deep breath, make sure I'm okay, make sure I've got myself together. And then I'm going to move forward into what we call the evaluation phase. Take a pause, relax, work out what's going on, then evaluate. Ask yourself the necessary questions. In that video there, where are my guys? How much ammunition have I got? How much water have I got? Who can I talk to? What is my way home? It's not difficult to imagine similar questions you might need to ask yourself in a high pressure work environment. How can I talk to my clients? Where are my customers? How can I do business development? What methods of communication do I have right now? So in other words, you're going to evaluate the circumstances, the situation that's happening around you. Where possible, always try to do that in a positive manner. In other words, what can I do? What can I achieve? What kit and equipment do I have? You'll find it much, much better from a stabilisation, reassurance, anxiety perspective if you can focus on what you can achieve rather than on what you can't achieve. Then what you're going to do is you're going to collaborate. Now, if we have a hand on heart moment, most of us will own up to the fact that we have a go-to team within the office, a group of people that always come true for us, always find us the answer and can be relied upon. Well, at this stage, I'm going to ask you to park that go-to team and do something a little bit different. When you do your evaluation, you're going to realise that there are some question marks. There perhaps is some intelligence that you don't have. Maybe there are some skills that you are missing. Right now, in the current situation, a good example of that is electronic communication skills. How do I hold a team meeting via a webinar? How do I communicate with clients that perhaps don't have brilliant internet connections, etc.? Just good examples. But what you're going to do is you're going to look to collaborate with the people that actually have the answers to those questions, can gain you that intelligence, or have the skills that you're currently missing from your team. Now, it may be that some of those people are already in your go-to team. Brilliant. But please make sure we go around the process the other way around. We start with the gaps, the question marks, and we collaborate with the people that can answer those questions. Then, together, we're going to sit down and make a decision. In our previous videos, we've talked about the OODA loop situation. Yeah? Observe, orientate, decide, and act. Ensure that you're using an OODA loop to best inform your decision-making process. Once you've evaluated and you've made your decision, then you're going to communicate, and only then. 
And you're going to notice now that we're telling you to communicate last. You've only got to watch the news to see companies, governments and organisations rush to be the first to communicate. The problem is when we talk about leadership, we talk about reassurance and we talk about direction coming from the leaders. If we have to retract that communication because we went too early, or if we have to change direction because we leapt too early at a decision, then what happens when we start to undermine the reassurance and the change of direction unnerves what is already an anxious situation. So in other words, what we're asking you to do is communicate decisively, clearly and last. Now, depending on the circumstances that you're in and the situation you find yourself in, the gap between taking your tactical pause and communicating can be really short. In the video you saw at the start of this particular session, I can assure you that gap was probably less than a minute. In business, it's rare that we have to make a decision quite that quickly. So in other words, take your time, work out your time scale, but still go through the process. If you've got a chance to really consider and really evaluate before you decide and communicate, then make use of that time. But communicate last in order to have the best possible effect when you're making critical decisions.